Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the Solemnity of All Saints. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Anthony Egan. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Today we are celebrating the Feast of All Saints, all those who are canonized, and all those known to God. As we prepare to celebrate this Eucharist, let us call to mind our sins, and ask God for mercy and forgiveness. I confess to, to Almighty God, God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us life everlasting. Amen. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. We, we praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. O God, fount of all holiness, make us walk worthily in our vocation through the intercession of your saints, on whom you bestowed a great variety of graces on earth and a single glorious reward in heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, saw another angel ascend from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God. And he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God upon their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, a hundred and forty-four thousand sealed, out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. After this I looked, and behold, a great multitude which no man could number, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and round the elders and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these clothed in white robes, and from where have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great tribulation, 
and they have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. The Lord's is the earth and its fullness, the world and all who dwell in it. It is he who set it on the seas. On the rivers he made it firm. These These are the people who seek your face, O Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The clean of hands and pure of heart, whose soul is not set on vain things. These are the people people who seek your face, O Lord. Blessings from the Lord shall he receive, and right reward from the God who saves him. Such are the people who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. These These are the people people who seek seek your face, O Lord. Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. to me all who labor and are heavily laden, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. At that time, seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you, and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. My brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Many years ago, while studying in Britain, I think it was around January of 1993, but could have been at the very end of 92, I attended a memorial service at St. Martin's in the Field in London to honor the memory of the South African political activist Helen Joseph, who had died on Christmas Day of 1992. In her life, this committed Anglican layperson 
who had earlier in 92 been admitted to the Order of St. Simon of Cyrene, the highest lay honor in the Anglican Church in Southern Africa, had been deeply involved in the struggle against apartheid within the labor movement, within the women's movement, and the Congress of Democrats. She'd been charged with treason and acquitted, banned for many years from public life, and often harassed by the security services. At the service, which was attended by British and South Africans, liberals, communists, and Christians alike, we came to the end of the service singing a song written by the English Puritan John Bunyan, he of Pilgrim's Progress fame. Now, to sing it to you would be a bit cruel and unnatural punishment, so I'm going to simply quote the opening verse. He who would valiant be against all disaster, let him in constancy follow the master. There's no discouragement shall make him once relent his first avowed intent to be a pilgrim. This classic hymn, so appropriate despite its archaisms and non-inclusive language, to celebrate a woman of courage strengthened by her Christian faith, offers us an image of heroic sanctity, the pilgrim journey from the ordinary to union with God or what we might call the journey to sainthood. As we celebrate today all saints, and tomorrow all souls, we are celebrating the cloud of witnesses, formally and informally recognized by the Church, who have borne witness to Christ in their lives, who have, despite their faults and failings, some of them many, tried to live, in particular, to Christ's Beatitudes. What's a saint? Now, there's a technical definition and a more general one. Both are valid. Both speak to us today. First, there are those whom the church formally declares, after a close examination of their lives, to be saints. Through a quite long and complex process in stages, where we use the term servant of God, blessed, and then saint, Rome examines their lives thoroughly also investigating claims that a certain number of miracles have been attained through their intercession before declaring them saints. Now, this is not to say they were sinless, and it certainly does not claim they are worthy of being worshipped. Only God is worshipped. What this means, ultimately, is that the Church claims reasonable grounds to believe that said persons are in union with God, because they have been valiant against all disaster, if I may quote Bunyan. This leads us to a more general understanding of saints, all those who are united with God in heaven. Now their status as saints we may never know, least of all being acknowledged as such by the church. Not that this matters to God, who, contrary to what some of us might like to imagine, he is not bound to obey the church. In many cases, there are those who are recognized as saints by their communities long before the cumbersome church process is completed. Many of us around the world acknowledged St. Romero of the Americas long before Oscar's formal canonization in 2018. And because, so far as I know, only the Catholic and Orthodox churches have a formal process of canonization, many others like Dietrich Bonhoeffer and Martin Luther King, are not officially called saints. Now, here's a little aside to any Protestants who may be watching. Come on, crew. Many of you, and I know of the Anglican Lutheran tradition here, already honor these folks' memory. I know some of you even jumped the gun with Romero, God bless you. Now, I dare you, make it formal. I'm sure Martin of Wittenberg won't object too much. Back to my main point. We can also see why tomorrow we celebrate all souls, where we remember all the dead whom we hope shall attain union with God. It's a kind of sideways acknowledgement that we're not at all too certain who's a saint and who's not. But why should we celebrate the saints? Now let's go back to the book of Revelation's intent. 
The author, St. John, or one of his followers, was writing to keep up the spirits of oppressed Christians, once again, against all disaster. His vision of the saints is a reminder to them that just as these folk withstood discouragement and persecution, so should they. The huge number impossible to count are examples, just as all saints should be to us. They call us to our true selves. Our calling, our ultimate destination, is union with God. Despite all our faults and failings, insofar as we live out the Beatitudes, we strive to true holiness, true sanctity. The cloud of witnesses, whether we know them as saints or not, stand with us in solidarity, inspire us by their lives, and cheer us on to victory. And so, in the company of all the saints, let us share together the faith we all profess by saying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And so, in union with all the saints, we bring before the Lord our prayers and petitions. As we honour all saints, known and unknown, we pray that by their examples we may grow in faith, hope, and love of the Beatitudes. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray to you for all God's children, that, as St. John exhorts us, we might all see God as God really is. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we honor all saints, known and unknown, we pray that the whole church may be inspired to imitate their example in the service of faith and the promotion of justice. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray, too, that the Church may embrace the examples of holy men and women whose witness crosses narrow confessional boundaries and, in doing so, grow in greater unity in Christ. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. As we honour all saints, known and unknown, we pray that their living of the Beatitudes may inspire all who hold public office to greater dedication and integrity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Let's spend a few moments bringing before the Lord our particular prayers and petition this, this, this day. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Loving God, in union with all the saints in glory, we bring before you our prayers and petitions. We ask you to hear them and answer them according to your will, and we make these prayers in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let's adore you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will be become for us the bread of life. This is the offering. Let's move the water and wine. May we come to share the divinity of him who shared our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, through your goodness. And we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. This will be God for Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all us, Holy Church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that, just as we believe the saints to be already assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for our salvation, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you are praised in the company of your saints, and in crowning their merits you crown your own gifts. By their way of life you offer us an example. By communion with them, you give us in companionship their intercession and their intercession sure support, so that, encouraged by so great a cloud of witnesses, we may run as victors in the race before us and win with them the imperishable crown of glory through Christ our Lord. And so, with the angels and archangels, and with the great multitude of the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, 
grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, with Booty our Archbishop, with Duncan his auxiliary, with the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Saviour's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, my brothers and sisters, behold the Lamb of God, the one who takes away the sins of the world. How blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, say the word, and I shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us life everlasting. Amen. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion, which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. 
Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here. Let us pray. O God, who refresh us with the one bread and sustain us with one hope, strengthen us likewise, we pray, by your grace, that as we are one with your saints, one body and spirit in Christ, we may rise with him to glory, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.